so you are entered into obligation so that is the two sides of the same coin but students they feel really hard to understand what is meant by the purchaser of call option and what is meant by the seller of call option so if you understand that please say i you know understand if you don't understand then please say repeat everyone please uh sir can you just explain uh like give two examples of what happens when the forex increases and why we choose to buy at when it increases okay <clears throat> we will be having you know uh a lot of examples in this lecture as well so we will be also taking them when practical example will do that it will be clarifying your you know concept but right now i am asking you understand this concept seller of call option or buyer or purchaser of call option right now just tell me if you understand this or not or should i need to repeat all this seller and purchaser stuff let me ask one by one because that is very important concept jackie you understand alima yes you understand that purchaser and seller of the call option what are their rights and what are their obligations um yes yes good laura you understand yes david you understand yes sir good day yes carolina yes loy camila nicola yes sir thank you michael leo yes yes okay. good Okay, let's move forward. Yes, let's move forward. Okay, now the factors that affect the currency call option premiums. So we talk about that. Who is going to pay premium? Purchaser or buyer will pay premium, and seller will. seller will receive the premium so premium depends on three factor number 1 spot price relative to the strike price the higher the spot rate relative to the strike price the higher the option price will be if the spot price minus the exercise price price is higher the more the higher the more is the value of premium number 1 length of the time before expiration the longer the time to expire higher the option price will be if time period is higher so if the question says that which one the call premium will be higher one year call premium one year call option or 30 days call option then you must select one year why because longer the time period call option price going to call option premium price going to be or option price going to be higher number 2 is the volatility the greater the volatility which means the greater volatility means the greater if the daily price going up and down up and down you don't know if the price is like this you know that is smoothly going up in one day or two days three days then you can extrapolate about future if the price is like this you don't know that it is increasing or decreasing every day right it is if you see one to 10 days after 10 days the price has increased but during this period it increase or decrease increase or decrease you don't know 
right? So in this condition, the future is skeptical, you know, skeptical, whether it will increase or whether it will decrease, right? So people become indifferent. When this situation occur, the call premium price also increased or call option prices also increased. Understand? So three factors that affect the call option premium. Number one, the difference between spot price and exercise price, the time period of the option and the volatility or risk of the uh, call option that whether it is according to our analysis or not, or you can say that the volatility is the higher the, so the greater the, the variability of the currency, the higher the probability that the spot rate can rise over the strike price, because you cannot for sure that the spot price gonna be higher or lower, because there is so much standard deviation so much variability, so much uncertainty, right? Now the uses of call options. The uses of call options, call option can also be used for hedge payables, hedge the project bidding to log the dollar cost of the potential expenses, hedge the target bidding of possible acquisition, and speculation for currency movement. So it means it can also be used for hedge. You can see hedge and can also be used for speculation. So two prime uses of the options are like in our future and forward. It's like hedge and speculation. Both can be used for hedge and speculation. That's why <coughs> It is said that derivatives can be used for hedge and speculation. So derivatives have three, future, forward options, right? So let's talk about the hedging payables, how we can hedge payables. And what do we mean by payables? We are exporter, we are importer. What do we mean by hedge payables? Payables means we need to pay. When we need to pay, it means we are importing the goods and we will be paying them, right? When we will be paying them, how we can use call options. Let's talk about this. So how firms use currency call options, which means hedging the payables. This is the example here. So when Pike Corporation of Seattle or Seattle orders Australian goods, it makes a payment in Australian dollars to Australian exporter upon delivery. So you are a US company, right? You contract to the Australian exporter, which means you are importer, right? And Australian dollar call options lock the minimum rate at which Pi Corporation can exchange for Australian dollar. For example, you will be purchasing it from Australian importers and you need to pay in 60 days, which currency? Australian dollar. It means you will be buying Australian dollar. When you want to buy, right? So what are your risk when you want to buy? Risk is that the Australian dollar can go up. So that is your risk. So you either you enter into buy forward by future in that scenario, you it will be obligation. But in option, what if the Australian dollar gonna decrease in future or forward, you must honor the contract. 
but in option you only worried about the increase in Australian dollar so you buy call option it means you are just paying call premium that's it and if what if the value of the Australian dollar decrease there is no obligation you can say that I don't want to honor this contract forget about it you cancel this contract and if the price go up you can always say that look it's my right to exercise you have to sell me a Australian dollar at the strike price and I will exercise it you buy from this seller and that's it you decrease your risk of increase in foreign currency we call this exchange rate risk everybody understand that yes, now sir. second use which is target bidding you can also relate it to like importer but since the nature of the agreement is different so you can have a different point of view let's talk about it target bidding which means there is some kind of project is offering and you need to bid if your bidding is accepted then you will be you know having to you know you know you will be entering into this contract to you know find out that uh, to, to to honor that contract but before that one you can always minimize the risk what if you win the bidding right what if you don't win the bidding you can minimize your risk your risk let's talk about this example so cali corporation is an mnc based in and how you pronounce that lauder dally or something whatsoever so cali corporation is, is an mnc based in ford whatsoever sorry i cannot pronounce it so that has a bid on a project sponsored by the Canadian government. If the bid is accepted, Cali will be needing approximately 500,000 Canadian dollar to purchase Canadian material and services. Right? So they don't have this Canadian dollar right now. If they win, then they would be needing it. Right? When they would be needing it, the chances are that the price of the Canadian dollar may go up. That is their major risk, which is exchange rate risk. However, Cali will not know whether the bid is accepted until three months from now. In three months, anything can happen. So they want to lock their price so that they can plan and they can maximize their profit as well right or they will be like minimizing their cost so in this case it can purchase a call option with three months expiration date so 10 option contracts so see they can also go into these over the counter or they can go to the exchange so they will be uh, 10 10 means it means one option is equal to 50,000 Canadian dollar Sorry, 50,000 Canadian dollar. How many options they need to, you know, they need to enter into the exchange that is 10 option contract. Multiply by 10, one contract is equal to 50,000 Canadian dollar, 10 is equal to 500.